In this lesson, before we dive too deep into all of the activities that we're gonna do to actually be building our list, we're gonna make sure to go over some of the do's and the big don't of list building. This information comes courtesy of Get Response's own deliverability director. So we definitely have, you know, the most trusted and reliable source for all of these tips today. So this is definitely gonna help us get sure, make sure that we get off on the right track and on the right foot whenever we actually building our list. So do number one. Your sign-up process should actually tell your subscriber when they're signing up, it should tell them four things. Number one, it should tell them who you are. So you want to make sure that you use your own logo or branding if you have it, your company or your blog's full name, and a description of you or your business that tells them what you really do. Number two, what kind of content you'll be sending. If they think they're gonna get messages from you about social media tips or new real estate offers, but you send them info about supplements, people are gonna be confused. And that's gonna just increase the chances that the messages that you send to them could be reported as spam. Number three, how often you'll be sending emails. Let your new contacts know if this is gonna be a daily update of your products or your offers or a weekly newsletter. If their frequency varies between the type of message or based on the type of message that you're going to be sending out, give your contacts the option to choose how often they receive messages so the, those contacts don't get annoyed or mark your messages as spam because they're getting them more frequently or in a different uh, you know, frequency than they expected. And number four, reassure your new contacts that you aren't a spammer. Basically, just say directly that they have the right to revoke their consent to receive messages at any time. Basically, AKA unsubscribe. And for many countries, actually telling the subscriber about the option to revoke their permission is a legal requirement. Do number two, keep your forms secure to help avoid two kinds of sign-up form threats, spam bots. So that's when an automated script is looking to submit spam to public forums and comment sections, we could say. So these bots are actually designed to cycle through a purchased list of addresses or even just make up fake addresses on the spot. So you definitely do not want these types of addresses on your list because sending to them greatly increases the chance that you'll be viewed and reported as a spam, spammer, of course. List bombing. So with this tactic, the idea is actually to flood the victim's inbox with as much email as possible. And sometimes this is done to make the victim angry and lose functionality of their email address, but often an attack is you know, on security and anti-malware professionals themselves. So this is actually accomplished by submitting the victim's address over and over to as many newsletter sign-up forms as possible. So how can you prevent those two, uh, you know, tactics from you know getting apart and you know joining your list <laughs> that you don't want you need to make sure that you have double opt-in as your opt-in process and captchas so the double opt-in subscription process sends a confirmation email to the subscriber before actually adding them to the list just protects the reputation of your bulk mail sends from any fake or malicious signups and of course, adding a CAPTCHA on a sign-up form just simply helps to prevent a bot from actually submitting the form. Do number three, clean your list. Your subscriber circumstances may change over time. Maybe they're no longer interested in your offers or they had false expectations, or maybe they're just getting too many emails. Whatever the reason, the best subscription process can't fully prevent, you know, unsubscribes or abuse complaints, bounces, and a lack of engagement. And so how should you decide who goes and who stays? One idea could be to initiate a win back campaign. So when it comes to deciding who's unengaged, it, of course it will vary based on the industry that you're in and how often you send your messages. Generally, you could look over the past few months and find anyone who hasn't opened or clicked any of your messages and send them another word, re-engagement message or a win back message. So often this message would include some type of call to action that actually confirms their interest in, main, in staying on the mailing list. And those who don't engage would be removed. And actually one of our uh, final lessons in this program will actually be all about list hygiene and cleaning our list uh, with those who are you know, not really engaging with our messages anymore. So stay tuned for that. We'll make sure that, uh, we, that you know exactly how to do that uh, before this program is finished. And so now let's get to the ultimate don't. We've had our do's, and so now we need the ultimate don't. Do not purchase email lists. 
It's really easy to find some email addresses on the internet and buy a list of emails, but these are of course usually sprinkled and you know filled with spam traps. And all it takes is one or two of those spam traps on your list to ruin your sending reputation for good. So why would you trust someone that you bought this list from with your entire you know email and online marketing strategy? There's many ways to build and promote a list of your own, which you will be learning all about throughout this program so that you can verify that your list is completely safe and secure. So there's, of course, no reason for you to go this route. And since you are here in this program with us, you shouldn't have any problem with that. And here are some general email addresses to avoid and to think about before you actually add them to your list uh, yourself manually or you know, any signups you may have. Unavailable or non-existent mailboxes, of course, and also email addresses that are designed for a single purpose, like what we see here, role-based addresses. Like you can see the examples, info at, team at, whenever it's a, you know, an email address that goes obviously probably to multiple people at once. You know, it's not one particular person or contact. People, of course, that you know don't want to be on your list. Uh, those purchase lists, like we mentioned, publicly available lists or the purchase list as well. If you want to stay away from all of those types of email addresses and only sign up with, you know, or allow really legitimate contacts who sign up themselves to join your list. And that's after double opt-in, remember, so that confirmation message is sent after they submit. And so now that we know our do's and our don'ts for list building, we want to stay tuned for the next lesson where we're going to start talking about lead magnets and how to create them. And don't forget to check out our PDF download for this lesson, which is the do's and the don't checklist at a glance. You can reference it at any time as you go through this process and make sure that you are adhering to all of those. So see you in the next lesson.